Hey, what's up you guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Carlos and we are actually starting a brand new series today, which is going to be called Hot Takes, where it's just basically me reacting to videos where it has to be about personal finance, fitness, or other interesting topics that are happening at the moment or videos that you guys recommend to me. So as always, make sure to leave your recommendations down below in the comments and give a like, subscribe. Hey, maybe you enjoy this. Maybe you find this entertaining, but why not? We're going to see it started today with a video from the channel Jubilee. I like Jubilee because because they have um, series such as Middle Ground and also uh, Versus type of stuff. And well, I honestly really like the stuff that they do. But in this particular episode, they actually were doing, it was actually their first one of their series called Bottom Line. It was actually earning $11,000 versus earning $60 in a single day. That's crazy and that's interesting. So we're gonna get right into this. So let's go ahead. Ricky, where are you at with your training? All right. I'm down. Nine hundred two dollars. Nine hundred and two dollars. Uh, like five bucks. <laughs> <laughs> I think the idea of like what money means to me has changed. I passed the milestone of like becoming a millionaire late two thousand and seventeen. I think money doesn't mean too much to me. I don't think we need as much of Food it as we we do. People do find it hard to talk about money because it's so private. It's like talking about underwear. That is true. Many people do find it tough talking about you no know, money because it's kind of a thing, especially if you're Latino, the Latino community, uh, sex, money, and other stuff like that. You don't really talk about it until until you're already going through it. So that's something that's, that he said is actually very true. Hmm. I like this guy. What is going on, everyone? It's Ricky with Learn Plan Pro. Oh. Uh, yesterday I covered. Hey, I know Ricky. I know Ricky, not from me personally, but I know him from YouTube. He actually is a YouTuber. About, I think he's almost a, almost a million subscribers, or he already reached it. I don't remember. I don't know at this moment. But I do watch his videos. He's actually, I think he's a day trader. He does other stuff like that. Yeah, that dude's legit. He he does a lot of stuff. Profits at 63.31 today during pre-market hours. It hit highs of $69. My name is Ricky Gutierrez. I'm 23 years old and I live in Gilbert, Arizona. What I do for a living is investing in the stock market. I'm an influencer. I own a series of real estate properties and I run a series of online businesses. Wow. Do you roughly know? much money you make annually yeah so uh but this year with the different products that we have going on uh, i can probably bring in like six to seven million who six to seven million that's a lot of dinero that's money right there just from day trading and i mean i think this video was made a couple years back so he wasn't like right now if he's about to be to a million he wasn't anywhere near a million but he's diversified himself because it's not just youtube it's also his real estate i know he also flips cars he lives in arizona he flips cars and when you flip cars over there there's not a tax if you were to do that here there's a tax that they put on you that you have to pay a good amount but there i don't believe that tax exists so we're good for him but damn six six point five million dollars a year I think he said he's 21 or 23. I'm 22. Man. San Diego. Is that where the other guy's at? My name is Azariah Randall and I'm 21 years old and I live in San Diego, California. What do I do for a living? I primarily deliver food. I signed up for this food delivery app. That's it. But do you see the difference what Ricky said he does I think compared to him? But he, two things. One, he's pretty young as well. Second, he lives in San Diego. And third, he only... That's what I took away right now. First of all, um, he is young. So, I mean, you can't judge him for anything he does. But second, he lives in San Diego. San Diego is super expensive. He's just, I think it's almost as expensive as living in San Francisco. San Francisco, San Diego, and the heart of LA, those are the expensive places in Los Angeles. I mean, those are the expensive places in California. My goodness. Damn, he, and he's only does food delivery. If you were to live in one of those cities, I mean, do something else um, other than just food delivery, 
uh, because you need you need to either start doing a business, make a YouTube channel. I wonder if this is a couple of years back. I wonder if he's made a YouTube channel. Let's see. And how much do you say you make like on average? I can make like easily like a hundred a day. Hope you guys all have an amazing rest of your day. Continue working hard, continue following dreams, let your passion be what drives your success. Like always guys, let's make sure that we end the year on a green note. Take it easy team. Uh, how did you do just in that session? Um, as in trading, not very good. So I'm down about 1%. In big picture, like it's not much, it's just because I'm right now invested with about $30,000. Boom, 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 what's going on guys? I made a mistake and I covered profits yesterday on you guys and look what I missed out on. We have these here, the R8 there. Wow. I have my other GTR over there. I own that house too. My favorite part of the day is working with my private group and seeing the, the excitement that they give back is probably one of the most rewarding things. Now, I'm not a big car guy, but I mean, those are, I heard the GTR and all that, and the Audi, those are expensive vehicles. Ricky, you my man. My goal is to create a series of applications that are worth like hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars. I think if I had $10 billion in my pocket right now, I think I would still be the same person because I have a stronger relationship with my faith. Matthew 6 and 21 says, wherever your treasure is, the desires of your heart will be also. Of course. Of what course. is going on, everyone? I'm going to be packaging some orders for Tech with Apparel. So you just sent your parents to Europe. Yeah, so they went for, I think, a total of like 24 days. Did you buy your parents a lot of things? Anytime it is that they like ask or need something, like I'll be like paying my little sister's tuition for her university. But then anytime that they, they're like running low or something, then I can assist, but. Yeah. What's up Instagram? Yo, look, it's a good day. We got, we got John here. He's following me around all day, pretending that my life is interesting. It might be dirty. <laughs> Uh oh, we got a delivery. We got the text message. We're going to the broken yoke, which is down here on six. Listen to the music. Got room for two of us in here? Hi. <laughs> Bye. Hey. Yeah, no problem. Six bucks. Hmm. What's going on, traders? How many BS has ever wanted to... Okay, this is something I have to mention, but I am... A television person in my church and I always look at the narrative that is being portrayed here the narrative is that Ricky from 6 a.m. He started doing stuff uh, But then you saw the other guy he at 8 a.m. He was still doing he wasn't doing anything actually And it's interesting to see because the narrative that is being portrayed is that Ricky does all this work at the beginning well um, I'm sorry. I didn't catch the other guy's name, but he's doing all the other stuff afterwards and then and the, but then once you see him, Ricky, the music with Ricky is a little bit more mellow. Like if he's like not really doing much compared to the other guy, the, the music's more hype. I feel like they're trying to portray that that the other guy's life is more hype compared to Ricky's life is more down. But Ricky's life is better because he's making more money. It's the narrative. They're painting a narrative. I'm already seeing it. Let's just keep watching. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like I'm down. Um, oh my god! Oh. Actually, more than I thought. Nine hundred two dollars. Nine hundred two dollars. You sweat that at all? Or? No, because like I've been down like two thousand dollars, and it recovers, and I make like three thousand dollars on it. So, mm -hmm. but do you remember how I told you about how the narrative? You saw how lazily it sounded like that he asked um, Ricky, "Are we gonna do anything?" Um, Ricky, how much have you? Uh, what's going on? He said, oh, yeah, uh, just $902. Like if it was nothing. <sighs> hey, man, don't drive off yet. You got your stuff on the back. Oh, 
Look at the narrative. Look at the narrative. So right now, as you can see, we don't have any deliveries. So we're waiting, playing the waiting game. It's kind of, it's just like when you text your crush and then you're waiting for her to text you back, but she never does. Honestly, I think I messed up with this position. I'm someone that like, I, I value the dollar so much. Like you saw me go to Chipotle and I won't get a drink. You got I a water. I just became very frugal from a very early age and very aware of how to try to make money and the stress that it brings on and seeing how it acted as a negative catalyst for my parents' relationship. We went to McDonald's and I, I overheard that my parents weren't doing as well financially and my cousin was like, oh, I want a Big Mac and I want large fries and I like looked at him and I was like, no, don't get that, like, you know. I wish they had a Big Mac. Whatever. Just because of the extra cost. That's when I really started to, you know, try to buy and sell like Snicker bars or Powerade just to pay for myself so my parents didn't have to pay me. Boom. So that one's gonna pay like Damn. nine bucks at Asia Walk. Hits. Let's go. Oof. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Too dark. Now I'm gonna say this. I worked for Lyft and I did Instacart. So I know exactly how this feels when he uh, is just waiting there. The waiting thing sucks. It, it really does demoralize you sometimes when you could be going like back to back to back and then there's a huge pause. What happens is that when you're working at a restaurant or a warehouse somewhere, you're active, right? Your body is active. You take a break, but then you go right back into it. The problem with this is that you do something for a good minute and then you sit in your car and the waiting game, you just don't know how long. So your body doesn't really know whether, you know, you want to rest or if you got to be ready to go and you're just like anxious at first. But then once you start getting rested and then that's when you got to go again, it, there's this like discrepancy within your body. It, just, it messes you up. And plus he said that he estimated that he was going to make like around a hundred dollars uh, that day. Uh, yes, there's days that that's a, that's a good, honestly, that's a good estimate because there's days that I've made $200 doing them, but there's also days that you've done 40 working the exact same hours. So it sometimes really depends on the, the day of the week, the area that you're in. And I guess, um, the kind of times that we were in, I started doing it but during the pandemic and like the heart of the pandemic, I was doing it and everybody was afraid to go out. So they would, you know, Uber everything, DoorDash everything. They would, you know, Instacart everything. But now the things are opening up. It's gone way down. So doing it now compared to doing it then is there's going to be a little bit of a difference. So that's what I'm saying. It's a, it's a good estimate. A hundred dollars a day. Dr. Pepper, Seafood Delight, House Egg Rolls and the Egg Flour Soup. Yeah. Awesome. This order is hella big. For nine dollars. <laughs> Waiting round two. When I was growing up, we were we were good financially up until my age like seven, I guess I would say. That was when my mom was like a single mom to me and my two sisters. We didn't know we were poor or like broke or anything because my mom did such a good job of hiding it and just like grinding and hustling. But then like growing up, I kind of did understand like our financial hardships. Yeah, it's interesting because as a kid, you don't really notice all those things. You notice them later, but you don't notice them at the moment. Huh. You know, when I was younger, I used to always think that my parents were rich, especially because we were all, at first when we were moving from house to house, I used to think, wow, my parents could afford all of these houses. Little that I, you know, when you come, when you come be a little bit older, you just find out that you're renting. But when you're younger, that's you don't know about that. So when they didn't take you to McDonald's, you specifically thought they didn't love you because you're like they have the money, they just don't want to give it to me. That's how I thought, and I'm sure that's how every one of us thinks. But yeah. Look how much we got paid for that. Thirty-five bucks. Ooh. Because that's like with a fat tip and whatnot. That's good. <laughs> yeah. I think like the biggest tip I ever got during Instacart was on Thanksgiving. I got like a, th a forty dollar tip within an envelope on the door, and someone was like, "Thank you for uh, for all your hard work and uh, happy Thanksgiving." And then I was like, "Wow, that was all in, in cash." But then they also tipped within the app, so it was it was a, a hefty tip. This is exciting. So what happened? Um. She says she's missing an item. Ooh. Yes, I'm so sorry. Yes, it's another part of your order. We have it back here. There's three salads, right? Yes. 
Okay, thank you. Fifty dollars. Boom, boom, boom. How many of you guys want to turn your passion for cars into profit? We are reopening the 30-day flipping wheels mentorship challenge. We sold that last time in three days. All you have to do now is swipe up to learn more. Uh, I got terrible news. They don't have the tomato and mozzarella panini, but they do have. So <laughs> I think it's this building right here. Is this twenty-two thirty? Dope. Sixty dollars. Is that it? Two or five? Ten? See <laughs> a narrative? It's been super slow for like an hour. Um, probably won't get any more orders just because we're downtown and everybody's probably like on their way home already right now. Yeah, we'll just call it a day. I feel like I know too well his position. Because you're just, really, you're just doing nothing. But I, first of all, the narrative. I told you, they're painting a narrative that Ricky's life from there on, he was even, they even probably told him, take a nap. <laughs> and then he went and lay down and was sleeping. And then this guy right here, he's stressing out, man, I only made $60 a day while Ricky is sleeping and still making money. So you see the narrative that is being painted right there. So it's interesting to say the least. I'll say that. It's interesting. But, you know, good on them for for being able to, to, to portray this. Um, however, man, I just, I'm relating way too much with him because I know how that feels. Oof. When you whisper through the phone, wait for me to come home. I, I think I think in today's world, um, money definitely does have a a huge form of credibility. I believe money can define you if you let it. I don't believe it defines me personally at all. I yeah, but you know, a lot of people they feel like they are defined by their money, at least by their social status. In the real world nobody is defined by their money everybody is defined by their personality who they are but um i guess you then you know once you are going through stuff yourself you start defining other people th with that so once you have money you don't define anybody by their money you define them by their personality and, and everything else but when you're in a bad position you are look at that person they don't have to go through that it's why, you know, the, the whole term eat the rich <laughs> is a big thing because there's a lot of people going through stuff. And then they look at these people that are, you know, posting on social media that their life is all perfect. But reality, I mean, it's just as hard as everybody else. So that's when people start defining other people by the money. It doesn't define, but it defines based on your circumstance. I've had like 27 cents in my bank account and also have had like $3,000 in my checking account. It was just like ready to ball out, you know? And I was the same exact person. Yeah. Does money buy happiness? No, that's an easy one. So money does not buy happiness. One, <laughs> that's, a, that's a quick one. Um, are you happy? Um, I'd say I, no, definitely. I'm very happy with, there's no reason not to be happy, right? Uh, with where it is that I am. Um, but there's definitely moments that um, feels like kind of like, I don't know, just like empty. <laughs> Interesting. It's funny that he mentions it like that because he says immediately, no, it does not buy happiness because it's kind of like the difference between being broke and being poor. Being broke is, you know, how much money you have and being poor is the mentality that you have. Does it buy happiness? No, it doesn't buy happiness because happiness is not a thing that you buy. It buys stuff that can produce happiness, produce an emotion, a reaction. But um, I think money, what it mainly does, it provides value in stuff. And then we, the value that anything has, we give it. If you work hard for your vehicle and guess what? And then you go and you buy it, it's going to be so much better than when you go and you get home and then you see that there's already a vehicle there that you didn't have to work for, that they gave it to you for free you're not gonna be as happy to see that car because it's not, you didn't work for it. You just got it compared to if you work for it. Value is I think what gives something 
joy, pleasure, and everything. That's why people say you never know what you have until it's gone. Because once it's gone, that's when you start valuing it. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's value what really gives joy to all these things. But I digress. I think money can buy happiness, but it can only buy either temporary happiness or things that make you happy. Uh, are you happy? I am. I I'm very happy. It's, it's weird. I'm like smiling answering that and like, I like struggle with depression and stuff, so it's weird, but it's like, like I'm very freaking happy. You always come through with some nice ass <laughs> And I mean, I mean, I like Ricky, but this other guy has a nice personality. He, the way he answers, he sounds more confident, more genuine in his re in replies. Not that Ricky doesn't, but it's like, he's more of, uh, he's more natural in speaking. Honestly, he should become an influencer. I feel like he should start a YouTube channel. He should start talking about his life, do some lifestyle vlogs, something. I just, I listen to him. I'm enjoying this. I don't understand how. Yeah. Why? They're nice. Appreciate it, man. Yeah. What's your name again? Kyle. Kyle? Nice to meet you. I'm Ricky. Ooh, COVID. Hand sanitizer. <laughs> Can you trace any of your income from today? Yeah, with everything, um, I'd say probably around about eleven thousand. Eleven thousand. Yeah. Eleven thousand dollars. Wow. What is it that you like to say? Oh, um, you know, continue working hard, continue following your dreams, let your passion be what drives you and your success. Um, and like always, let's make sure that we end the year on a green note. Let's go. Be very loud for Azariah. That's his outro. <laughs> I've seen your videos, man. That's your outro. <laughs> hey, make some noise for me if you broke. Ooh, wait. All right. Y'all that hesitated, y'all all getting robbed by the end of this set tonight. The day we made 60 while we were out in like almost five hours, which is like 12 bucks an hour. Um, I think minimum wage is like 11.50. I would like to be making more money. I'm trying to figure out ways to do that. People have lately been telling me I'm funny. I found that out recently. Um, so that's part of the reason I just started doing stand-up comedy. I can definitely make people laugh. Hey, heads up. We've got the light. I, I, hit you. I know, right? He may have. Hey, but write the check. Write the check. <laughs> <laughs> so all my friends that graduated high school just graduated college, and I'm like, dang, they broke. They like 120,000 in debt. I'm just like 2,000 in debt. You feel me? So who who won? We can we can all read books. You feel me? Like. <laughs> yeah, honestly, um, I like the. I mean, I understand the narrative. Because it was not just, you know, um, showing what they do in their day, but it was like the the correlation, right? The direct correlations in their days and how one of them is awake super early. That's why Ricky's tired, <laughs> looks a little bit more tired. While they do, you know, it's nighttime. I didn't see, you didn't see anything of Ricky in the night. I'm pretty sure he's sleeping so he can be awake earlier while he's, you know, at a stand-up comedy club at night doing all these other things. You see how the day progresses for each of them. Now, I guess I was wrong. I guess he doesn't just do food delivery. I guess he also does comedy. Um, regardless, I feel like Jubilee should reach out to him to do a follow-up. I don't know if they did. This is a couple years back. If they haven't, Jubilee, you gotta get on it. Because that was, honestly, he was pretty creative. I liked him. Uh, I, like, I like Ricky as well, but um making a thousand dollars making sixty dollars honestly it's all depends on you i feel like i i really like how ricky was i really like what he's done at his young age he didn't just stay doing one thing i said that like the one thing he was doing was food delivery while well, compared to ricky was only doing um you know, real estate all these other things it really depends on you we all have the same time the same amount of time in a day we all can do more but it really just depends on the decision that you make. So um, I honestly like this video. What do you guys think about it? Let me know down in the description down below. And if you haven't already, like, subscribe, and and we'll be seeing you in the next hot take. These are gonna come out, maybe we'll see right now, twice, three times a week. We'll see, depends on you guys. If you like this video, interact with it somehow. And with that, we'll see you next time. Take care.